Jacob, your mom is fine. She survived the car crash with only minor injuries. Oh, I'm so relieved nothing happened to her. She's such a strong woman. Me too. Thanks for looking out for her. You've been a great help. Mom called me herself to let me know, so I figured she was okay. She sounded calm and cheerful on the phone. But I do think she'll have to be admitted for a while. She'll need round-the-clock nursing care. The crash did more damage than it seemed. Wait, really? What do you mean she'll need nursing care? I thought she was fine. She didn't mention anything about that to me. Well, I've managed to chat to her quite a bit since the accident. She told me some things she didn't tell you. She said that after the crash, she was dizzy all the time and in a bit of a daze. She couldn't move her legs properly either. She has some nerve damage and muscle weakness. Of course, the doctors are saying she could get back to health with rehab, but given her age, it's likely that she'll get tired pretty fast. Rehab isn't a walk in the park. It's hard work and painful. When she told me all that, I couldn't help thinking that she'll definitely need nursing care after she's discharged. Someone to help her with daily activities and keep her company. Yeah, it does seem that way, doesn't it? I've always thought mom was pretty healthy up to now. But after an accident, you never know what will happen. She's at that age where things can go downhill pretty fast. But I'm just happy she made it out of that accident alive. That's a miracle in itself. Yeah, I think we all are. But we do have to get real and think about finding a nurse. She'll be discharged in two weeks, and we have to have something sorted by then. You're going to come to the hospital and see your mom today, right? I wasn't planning on it. It takes me like an hour to get to the hospital from my office. And I have a lot of work to do today. But if you hurry, you can make it here within the visiting hours. You could see her for yourself and talk to her about nursing care. She needs your support and input on this decision. Yeah, I could make it, but I would only have about 30 minutes with her. And I'm exhausted today. I had a long meeting with a client, and I still have to finish some reports. That's so insensitive of you. She'll be so happy just to see your face. She misses you so much. She's always asking when you're coming to visit her. She'll be fine. I've heard all about how she's doing from you. There's no need to see her in person. Besides, she's fine, and she's going to be in hospital for another two weeks. I can visit her on the weekends, but after work, all I want to do is go home and sink into the couch with a beer and watch basketball. I think you're making a bigger deal of this than it needs to be. You really are childish sometimes. Go and see her. You're her son. You should be there for her when she needs you most. Don't you care about her at all? But I'm not a child. If I went, it would all just be for show. And what's the point in that? Don't get me wrong. If her life were in danger or something, I'd go. But she's fine. Just having an accident should be enough to scare you. If she sees you, she'll probably liven up a bit too. At the moment, she's not even trying to leave her bed. Look, I get all that, but I'm crazy busy at work, and I'm just too tired. You don't work anywhere near as much as I do, so I don't expect you to fully understand. I've been in this job for a while, and Mom is always supportive. She'll understand my situation. You're unbelievable. After all she's done for us? She's a mother. You can't bring up raising me as something I should be eternally on my knees about. It's a mother's job to raise her child. I'm not talking about that. She also lent us money when we needed to buy a new car, remember? Even as an adult, she's done nothing but help you. Don't bring up the car money like it was some grand gesture. She had so much money from when Dad died that she didn't know what to do with it all. Exactly. She had so much money. So it wasn't your money to have by default. I can't believe I have to work so hard to convince you to treat your mother with a bit of respect. Even before now, you hardly even went to see her. It was always me going alone. I don't know why you're getting annoyed at me for that. I'm busy going out and earning money so that we can live. All I ask you to do is go and see her instead of me. Is that a big deal? Would you feel better if we went and stayed at mom's house for a while? The house will be free for two weeks anyway. 
and it's closer to the hospital than to our place. So we could take the things mom wants to the hospital. It's a nice idea, but it's only an hour from our place to the hospital. Overall, I think it's just easier to come from home. Oh, actually, I have another idea. Mom will need a caregiver after she's discharged, right? You've always looked after her when she's needed help. How about you stay at her place after she's discharged, and you can be her caregiver? I can't stay there all the time because of work, but you aren't working at the moment. It will work perfectly. I mean, I suppose it could work, but what about our place? You're not exactly a fan of housework. I could get by. And you'd go to your mom's place on weekends? Yeah, I mean, if I'm free, then yeah. What do you mean, if I'm free? She's your mom. You can't expect me to do everything. I already go and work all week. Please forgive me for wanting a couple of days of actual rest every week. Work is really a grind sometimes. I'd just appreciate if you could pull your weight sometimes as well. Thanks for looking out for mom. How can you say that? I do pull my weight. Anyway, I'll ask your mom what she thinks about me being her caregiver. But you've got to promise to help out too. Yeah, yeah, I'll help out too. I've got to get back to work. Speak to you in a bit. Hey Jacob, what on earth is this? Are you trying to be funny or something? Did the boxes arrive? Yeah, they did. But I don't understand why you sent all of my stuff to your mom's house. All of your stuff was getting in the way at home, that's why. But I'm not planning to live here forever. I told you that I'd be home once or twice a week. You don't have to worry about coming home. I've canceled our contract on this house. You've done what? Why on earth would you cancel our contract on the house? We've lived there for over 10 years. Well, you're always at mom's place. One person doesn't need this big house. It's completely unnecessary. Not to mention a waste of money. What the heck? Why did you think you could just do that without consulting me first? You never mentioned it once to me. I thought you'd try and stop me, but I'm a bit more in the know about this kind of thing. It was the right move. You don't know that I would have stopped you. I would have agreed. I was never opposed to living with your mom. My parents died when I was quite young. So I care for your mom because it's like having a living parent in this world. And I know that you've been left alone in that big house. Moving definitely makes sense. If only you'd talk to me first. Well, if you would have said yes anyway, what's the problem? It's not about whether I would have said yes or not. Anyway, what about you? Where are you going to live? Closer to here? Actually, I found a nice place closer to my office. I'm going to rent that for a while. What? Why don't you find a place closer to here so you could help out? You haven't been to your mother's house in, like, a year. And now you're going to move even farther away than we were before? Stop getting so angry. I told you that you should be my mom's caregiver. Didn't you understand that means I don't have to be? I'm a busy man. I don't have time to mess around with caring for my mom when there's someone already doing it. Don't talk like that. She's your mother, for God's sake. I'm just speaking the truth. Mom's got money, too. If she wanted more help, then she could get it herself. Oh, I just realized what's going on. I get why you're doing and saying all this now. What? I'm just being honest with you. No, you aren't. You're having an affair, aren't you? What makes you think that? Before I moved in with your mom, you were always coming home late. There were quite a few days when you wouldn't come home at all. That went on for about six months, if I remember correctly. You always said it was because you were overwhelmed at work. But that was a lie, wasn't it? I bumped into your coworkers a few times around town, and they told me that there's a new policy at work that means you can't work overtime. And so what? What do you mean, so what? You're having an affair. And do you have any proof? I don't, but... Either way, I'm happy to get a divorce if that's what we're going to do. Really? Just like that? I am left wondering, though. If someone who's been a housewife for years could carry on with her current standard of living if she got divorced, you don't have any family that can help you out. And I'm almost certain you don't have any savings to your name. Well, I guess that's right. And then, 
there's my mom, who you said was like your own. You would just leave her? Don't you think it's better to be sensible about this and carry on? Is that really what you think? You really want to carry on with us just because it's sensible? To be honest, I don't really care. If you want to, I'll sign the divorce papers. But if not, we can carry on as usual. I wouldn't even hate you for leaving my mom, to be honest. You know that without evidence, no one will believe you. You'll be left all alone in this world. At least I'll get half of my possessions and money. We're married, so you know I'll be able to get my share. Well, yeah, that goes without saying. I wasn't going to be generous to you in the proceedings, to be frank with you. But given that you've done me a favor by looking after mom so much, I'll be willing to give you a fair amount of money without question. You really don't care about ever seeing your mom again, do you? And you don't have any love for me, clearly. It is what it is. I thought that having a housewife would make me happy. But it seems that housewives aren't made to be with hardworking men. You lost your shine pretty fast. <laughs> when I look at you now, I see an old woman. Is that why you left dealing with your mom to me and escaped to be with another woman? Don't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> you haven't proved that I'm having an affair yet, have you? Aren't you going to start asking me some leading questions to get it out of me? To be honest, I'm already convinced. But think about this for a second. Nah, let's skip the thinking and just jump directly into the divorce. We should both start getting ready to sort out the divorce proceedings. And while you're looking after my mom, you'd better start job hunting or you're going to be left with nothing. You're the worst! Ha ha ha! Even if you think that, there are clearly a lot of women that don't think so. Do me a favor and don't hold a grudge against me because you didn't see this coming yourself. I didn't see it coming that you'd wither up and dry out into such an old biddy after such a short time being married. <laughs> anyway, we're getting this divorce. You should be thanking me that I haven't completely cut you off. I won't be thanking you for anything today. When all of these emotions calm down, let's get in touch again. What the heck? You're still at mom's house? It's been two months. How long do you plan to sponge off her? Don't you think it's time you became an adult and branched off to live on your own? What perfect timing. I was just thinking I'd message you. I thought we agreed to get this divorce going ASAP. I was waiting for your lawyers to get in touch, but nothing has come through. You are absolutely shameless, aren't you? Me? Shameless? I could say the same thing to you. I've taken care of your suffering mother so much, and just when it becomes necessary to hire a caregiver to take over, you run away. You are a total lowlife. Ha ha. You sound worn out from looking after my mom. Thanks for doing that, by the way. Good work. It must annoy you that you're still looking after her when you're getting divorced anyway. I'm not looking after her anymore. What do you mean? You're at her place, aren't you? I called mom the other day, and she said she was fine because you were with her. Yeah, well, I am with her, but I wouldn't call it looking after her. We're on a spa break at the moment. We're on a one-week relaxation to celebrate her finishing her recovery. What about needing a nurse? You told me that mom can't walk. I thought that she wouldn't be able to walk a single step, but I was totally wrong. She tried incredibly hard with her rehab and has been able to walk again just fine. She's been running around the place today. She's more lively than I am at the moment. I don't... I don't get it. Someone who needs a nurse shouldn't be that active. What's going on here? I thought it wasn't just about walking. I thought her mental strength was also dwindling, and that's why a nurse was becoming necessary. Well, about that. It seems that there was a bit of a misunderstanding. She said that although she needed some support, she didn't mean a nurse. She just meant someone to keep her company and help her with some small errands. When I arrived at her place, I was initially quite confused too. When I asked her what had happened, she explained it all to me. What? And why didn't you tell me straight away? She told me not to tell you. Why wouldn't you tell me? I'm her son. She's my mother. It's funny how someone who hasn't come to see her once since the accident and never turned up to help out keeps on going on and on about family. If you really cared about your bond with her, you would have turned up to see her at least once. I trusted you to help her. 
You didn't trust me to help her. You just wanted me out of the house. At that time, I thought she was going to lose her mind. So I figured I had to go or no one would be looking out for her. Why didn't she tell me any of this herself? Other than that, you never go to see her. You barely even message her. You're both nut jobs. I shouldn't be dealing with this much crap for this. You two are way too into each other. It's honestly weird. I think she was right to try and see what your intentions really were, though. This was your last chance. What do you mean, last chance? She wanted to check what you'd do after she told you she needed help. And you performed just as she had expected and didn't show up once. Your love for her has fully run out, hasn't it? It's not like I had any love for her in the first place. Oh, I see. The masks are off. It's about time. And it's not only that you didn't show up to see her. She was the one that realized you were having an affair. What? How? She saw you at the mall with another woman before the accident. She was initially just suspicious, but then she saw you two kiss in a cafe. Oh, man. And to think, I wasted so much time trying to keep it a secret. Oh, well. <laughs> when she told me she looked so ashamed, she could barely look me in the eyes. She told me she was sorry for spoiling you when she raised you. That's the reason why you turned out like this. She told me that she needed care so that we'd end up separating. She knew that if she said she needed care, you'd send me to her. She knew that you'd never come to visit, so it would drive us to divorce. Are you serious? So she purposely plotted out this divorce? What is she, some kind of mastermind? How could she possibly plan all of that? That's what I thought as well. And yet, here we are. Well, fair enough. I guess I'm kind of impressed, to be honest. I was in shock when she first told me. I don't think someone's worried for me that much since I was a child. It's because of your mom that I finally saw the light. I don't have to do everything exactly the way you tell me anymore. Once my eyes were opened, I wholeheartedly thought that I wanted a divorce. I thought that a divorce wouldn't be the worst thing for a long time. You don't need to make it sound like such a moving story of self-discovery. We just weren't getting on too well. If we're both so set on getting this divorce, then let's get the ball rolling. I'll send the divorce papers through tomorrow. Sign them when you're back from your spa vacation. I don't know if my lawyer will be available when I get back. A lawyer? Yeah, your mom didn't only see you with another woman, but she saw you giving her jewelry that suspiciously looked like mine. When I checked, I noticed some of my rings had gone missing. So, as I'm sure you can guess, a lawyer is going to help me get the money for those things. But you don't have any proof. You can't just say, his mom saw him do it in court. Your mom also realized that. That's why she hired a private investigator to gather evidence on you. She did what? She hired an investigator to follow you. And I can tell you, they really gave her a treasure trove of evidence to use. That stupid old woman. When she saw all the pictures, she decided she wanted to completely cut ties with you. Ugh, I hate her so much. You know what? I don't even care if she wants to cut ties with me. I want nothing to do with that old hag. The real joke is on her, though. I'm her only child, so when she dies, everything is going to be left to me. I'm going to live like a king on her money. You're going to live like a king, are you? Good luck with that. What do you mean by that? I'm entitled to it as her son. Even if mom says she doesn't want me to inherit her money, I'll still be able to get my hands on a part of it. That's assuming that she leaves it to you. It's her money, so she can do whatever she wants with it. She can donate it to local charities, give it to her friends, you name it. As long as she has a will. Of course I would be in the will. I am her only son. Have you been poisoning her against me? You're over there plotting to cut me out of my rightful inheritance, aren't you? I'm not plotting anything. You sent me over here, and you even shipped all my belongings here without even telling me. Are you with mom now? Tell her I want to speak with her. Why don't you call her yourself? I tried to contact her, but I couldn't get through. She must have blocked me or something. Well, you know your mom. When she decides on something, she's not one to give in easily. And don't think you'll be able to use me to get to her. If she doesn't want to speak to you, then I'll respect her wishes. Please just tell her I want to speak to her. I'll apologize for everything I've done to you. I'm not going to do anything for you. Actually, we'll be home in three days. That's Saturday, isn't it? You'll be home from work, right? I don't really want to meet without a lawyer, but if it gets it done faster, then we could meet and discuss some divorce stuff. How about we meet in that cafe we used to go to when we first met? Just wait a second. Maybe we can hold off on the divorce. I want to speak to everyone at Mom's house before we go any further with this. The only thing I want to talk about with you is our divorce. Besides, we can't meet at your Mom's old house. Why not? 
Because she moved. Without telling me? Did she have to tell you? It was my childhood home. Poor you. I seem to remember that it was you that moved without telling me and sent all my things to your mom's house. And you're seriously trying to tell me that your mom should have told you? Your mom was the owner, so she could do what she wanted. I'm sorry. It was completely wrong of me to move without telling you. I realize now that I should have consulted you first. Could you tell me where her new place is? Don't be stupid. I'm not telling you that. But I'm the only family member she has left in this world. At her age, something could happen at any time. What if she falls down the stairs? If I don't know where she lives, then how can I help her when she needs me? Don't worry about that. I'm living with her too. So if anything happens, I'll be there to help her. Why are you living with her? She told me that I'm her daughter, no matter whether we're related by blood or not. And I feel exactly the same about her. She's my mom. So I'm going to be by her side till the very end. So don't worry about her. I'll be here to look after her. I see. I was wrong. I was so wrong to have treated you the way I did. I am so sorry I treated you like you were dirt on my shoe. I don't need your apology. Now, if you keep on apologizing without meaning it, then aren't you still being condescending? You don't have to worry about hurting me anymore. From now on, we have nothing to do with each other. You can't do any more damage now. Please, just listen to me. I'm genuinely so sorry. Don't say that we have nothing to do with each other. You were always so kind to me. Don't you think that you could show me that lovely side of you that I adored and forgive me? I promise I'll be a great husband from now on. Absolutely not. I was kind to you because I loved you. I feel nothing but hate for you now. So why would I be nice to you? Please, isn't there any way we can still be together? I want mom to be in my life too. I'll apologize to both of you. I'll even get down on my knees if that's what it takes. You're so predictable. Your mom and I both know that you're only saying these things so you can chat about the inheritance. It's so gross that you're always focused on the inheritance. You've always completely ignored your mom and me. But when it comes down to inheritance, you're all ears. You're a shameless excuse of a man for clinging on to us for so long just to use us like that. Well, you know what? You have nowhere to go and no family left in this world. You're a worthless piece of trash. Jacob lost everything when we divorced. He had cheated on me with a younger woman, but she dumped him when she found out he tried to get back with me. He begged me to forgive him, but I had proof of his infidelity and I made him sign the papers. He sent me a letter saying he still loved me and his mom, but we burned it with disgust. He was broke and sued for stealing my jewelry. He had to pay me half of everything he owned. He used to be rich and arrogant, but now he is poor and pathetic. His mom changed her will and cut him off from his dad's inheritance. She was disgusted by him too. I live with his mom now in an apartment she bought with the money from her house. I pay her a little rent every month and she's happy to have me. It's weird that I live with my ex-husband's mom, but we get along so well. We cook together, watch TV shows, and go for walks. She's like the mother I never had. And I finally found a job that I love. I thought about moving out, but she said I could stay with her until I find a new husband. She said that with such kindness and hope that I teared up. She's such a wonderful woman. She deserves better. I think I'll stay here for a while longer. I don't need a boyfriend right now, just a friend. I'm very happy here, even if we're not related by blood. She's more than a mother-in-law to me. She's my second mom and my guardian angel. I'm so grateful for everything she's done for me and I want to make her feel as special as she is in my eyes.